You're on the Bible Forum. It's Sunday night, October 6, 2019. I want to talk to you about Communist China and religion. A Chinese woman who wants to remain anonymous spoke with an attorney in China that the author of this piece, Reggie Littlejohn, worked closely with in the court system. The Chinese court system is not an independent branch of the government like the American court system. There's no separation of powers in China. The Chinese courts are controlled by the government. They are designed to execute national policy, not justice. She says, in the courts, I was told that Christianity was the opium of the people designed to pollute Chinese minds and overturn the communist government. The Chinese government and its court system regard Christianity as a threat, an enemy, because communism is atheistic and they believe that Christianity will make the country unstable. They want Christianity to stay small. I would add personally, they're doing the same with Islam. They don't like that either. The Chinese Communist Party also heavily persecutes Tibetan Buddhists, the Uyghur Muslims and Falun Gong practitioners, equal opportunity. Anyone who worships a divine being is the enemy of the Chinese Communist Party. When the CCP arrests a pastor, the criminal charge is that he is a traitor who is threatening national security. These pastors have no right to legal representation. If they have someone brave enough to be their lawyer, the pastor can be beaten up before seeing that lawyer, and their attorney can be beaten for seeing him. Though some are real Christians, many pastors of the official registered churches are not believers. They are government workers paid by the government. This is one reason that many ch Christians choose not to go to what are called the Three Self officially registered churches. Three Self is a characteristically Chinese way of abbreviating self-governance, self-support, and self-propagation. For example, Catholic believers in China are not allowed to accept the leadership of the Pope. Chinese churches can have no relationships with churches outside China. They cannot receive foreign funding, teaching, or leadership. Now there are two huge changes in the law regarding religious practice in China. First, the new law greatly expands the government departments that can persecute religious believers. Under the previous law, only the Religious Affairs Bureau would enforce religious restrictions. Under the new law, every layer of government can regulate religious affairs. The fact that there are so many more officials cracking down on unregistered churches puts tremendous pressure on the members of those churches. As a part of President Xi's crackdown, Chinese Christians are facing the most persecution since the Cultural Revolution in the 1960s. She says, I know of an incident in which some Chinese Christian missionaries went to a Christian conference. This was November 2018 in Thailand. Chinese communist spies also went to this conference and secretly recorded the attendees. Many of the missionaries were arrested upon their return to China. Friends of mine were watching a documentary regarding Tiananmen Square in their own living room in a city in Guangdong province. For this, they were arrested and remained under surveillance to this day. Secondly, the new law makes informal gatherings clearly illegal. The churches have no freedom to, of assembly. If a group of believers gathers to pray and they are not registered, the new law makes this gathering strictly forbidden. Before, such gatherings were strongly discouraged but not technically illegal. Under this new law, the house churches in my area have been forced to make impossible choices. Either they must dissolve if they refuse to register or they must register with the government. 
Those who register are concerned about surveillance of the church and of its members. In addition, their sermons and teachings will be monitored. Believers are also worried that the church's tithes and offerings could be confiscated by the government and that their landlines may be monitored by the Chinese equivalent of the CIA. Being the member of a house church in China is dangerous. Most of the members of underground churches in my area are young. Today I would not have the freedom to be a Christian in China. If I were to lead a woman's prayer meeting in my own living room, I could get arrested and face criminal charges as well as a heavy fine. I could be jailed, tortured, and killed even before a trial. If I made it to trial, the trial would not be fair because the purpose of the court system is to advance national policy, such as to keep Christianity from spreading. In a remote area, cadres took down religious images and replaced them with pictures of President Xi Jinping. The Chinese Communist Party does not want you to believe in God, but in the party. Xi is like Chairman Mao, centralizing power into his own hands. He has changed the Chinese constitution to remove term limits. He will be a dictator for life. Despite all of this, some brave underground churches continue to meet secretly. They have to sing their hymns very quietly to avoid detection. Many churches, once discovered, are kicked out by the landlord and have to move from place to place every week. The Chinese government does not like evangelists. I know a traveling preacher who disappeared in 2004. The China slash Vatican deal has been a very terrible thing for Chinese Catholics. Perhaps the Vatican does not know how Catholics have been jailed and tortured for their faith. The Chinese government has been inhumane to religious believers, including Catholics. She pleads with this man, Reggie, that she's writing to, to please tell the world about the suffering of Christians in China. They are discouraged. They are afraid. Can you help us? Can you pray for us? This is a very different story story than we get from the main line, mainstream news or churches. Pray for China, for your brothers and sisters living there.